Good afternoon, everybody. Hope you're well. Um, I'm Lynn from Music Support, and I'm really excited to be here with you this afternoon on the first day of Mental Health Awareness Week uh, to welcome you to Music Support's Mental Health Hour. Um, in case you're unfamiliar with Music Support, we are the charity that help those in the music and live events industry affected by mental Ill, Ill health and or addiction. Um, you can find out more about us, including how we're celebrating our first, fifth birthday this month, uh, by visiting www.musicsupport.org. Um, here you'll also find details of our vital services and how we support um, our colleagues in the industry, um, including a confidential helpline, which is run by trained staff um, who have personal or lived experience working in the industry and issues that affect peers. We also operate safe hubs um, backstage at major events, which was pre and hopefully post COVID times as well. Um, and this is for artists and crew to take a little bit of time out and speak to mental health first aid um, trained professionals. And what I should say that is music support is, is there for everybody in the industry, whether you're an artist on stage, whether you're building the, building the stage itself, driving a truck, promoting the show, um, operating the AV, we're, we're there for everybody. So um, please, you know, never feel free, never be afraid to reach out to us because we're here for you. Um, but two other services which we're going to focus on today. Um, so thanks to funding, um, Music Support is really proud to offer one year's free subscription to um, NHS approved wellbeing app Thrive. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that later. It's a really fantastic tool to help protect your mental health. Um, so I'm really excited that we're going to be joined by Sean from Thrive, who will give us a live demo of the app and also we have an opportunity to ask any questions as well so um, if you have the app and you're already using it or if you're completely new to it then that's for you and please feel free to enter any um, questions and we'll answer those for you later but first up um, I'm really pleased to introduce my fantastic colleague um, Norman Beecher who is um, Music Supports Addiction Counsellor and Mental Health First Aid England trained instructor, it's a bit of a mouthful, um, and he's going to tell us about Music Support's mental health first aid training um, and how you can avail of it. Um, he's also going to be joined by two very special guests who will tell you about the impact the training has had on their lives, especially in the last year. It's been a really difficult year for all of us. Um, so without further ado, please let me welcome Norman. Hello, Norman. Hey, thanks, Lynn. Hey, um, yeah, thanks for joining us today. Um, that was quite a mouthful, wasn't it? It was, it was. Mental so health I, for a say, licensed instructor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. So yeah. I'm, I'm going to stop talking and I, I'm, I'm just going to hand over to you. So Thank thanks, you. Norman. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, as Lynn mentioned, I'm an addict, my name's Norman Beach. I'm an addictions counsellor and mental health for a say, instructor. I work for Music Support as they're learning and development specialists. And basically what that means is I design and deliver training for uh, the volunteers and the music industry in general. Um, of course, that also includes mental health first aid training, which I deliver approximately once a month um, at the moment. This is what I'll be talking to you about uh, for the next little while. And um, before I, I get into uh, introducing the, my guests, what I'd like to do now, though, is just take you through a little bit about what mental health first aid is and why we do it. This slide two, please, Jamie. So uh, why do we um, do mental health first aid? So we, we know that there's six, the, the numbers we have, 61% of the UK employees have experienced a mental health issue due to work or where their work was a contributing factor. So that's massive. 31% um, of the workforce have been formally diagnosed with a mental health condition at some point in their life. So you could see why it's necessary um, for um, mental health first aid. Next slide, please, uh, Jamie, that's slide three. And yet, Despite all of that, we, we discriminate against people with mental ill health. Oftentimes, it's because of our own frame of reference, what we, we believe or what we make up about mental illnesses. Um, we are not well informed about mental health or mental illness. We lack the insight to realize that we need help or that help is actually available. Uh, one of the things that has become acutely aware to me anyway, on many of the courses I've done, is that people sometimes come onto the courses expecting to learn how to support others, 
but then they realize, oh, wow, I've been living with some of this stuff myself. So again, we lack the insight sometimes to realize that we actually need help. Um, another reason is that um, professional help is not always available or on hand, and the majority of us don't know how to respond. We often respond from a position of fear or a position of judgment. Uh, slide four, please, Jamie. And so the aim of MHFA is not to teach people sort of how to treat mental illnesses. It's very much like physical first aid. It's about how do you support someone? Uh, the aims is to preserve life where the person may be at risk of harm to themselves or to others, uh, to provide help to prevent the mental health issue from becoming worse, to promote recovery of good mental health, to provide comfort to the person with mental health issue, and also to raise awareness um, to, to in the general community. Um, it's also about reducing the stigma. There's quite a lot of stigma associated with mental ill health, and it, uh, and that stigma oftentimes prevents people from um, getting the help they need. And so mental health first aid is also about reducing the stigma and discrimination associated with mental ill health. And finally, and, I'm, and definitely not the least of it, it's also about how do I improve my own um, well-being. Next slide, please, Jamie, slide number five. So how have we been involved? Well, um, Music Support employs um, an in-house mental health first aid instructor. That's me. <laughs> uh, we also, because of demand, um, have another mental health first aid instructor um, beginning in later on this year. And I believe next month, actually. In fact, yes, I know next month. Uh, to date, we have actually trained in excess now of 200 delegates, uh, most of them during the, the COVID period with on, our online course. And folks, you could be next. So the way you um, you might want to get involved is if you're interested in, in learning more about mental health first aid, you could certainly contact us on, at the learning at music support dot org um, email. You will also be getting a copy of this slide deck at the end of the, the program, so don't worry if you don't remember this. Next slide, please. So does it work? And how do people feel about it? Well, here you, here you have it. Testimonials of uh, past delegates. We've, I'll just read one of them here, actually. It just says, attending this course was such a hugely supportive and informative experience. I felt safe and secure and able to explore the issues dealt with by the course as deeply as possible. That says it all, really. Um, and so with, without further ado, what I'm going to do now um, is introduce you to two of our delegates to give you some live um, information about how they have experienced our course and also what they've done with it once it's been done, once, once they were done. And so I'd like to introduce you to Paul Jones and Susie Green. Welcome, guys. Hi. And first of all, I'd like to introduce you. Susie is um, uh, a uh, tour manager, and she's also one of the founders of the, the production group and the Back Lounge. Is that right, Susie? Did I get that right? The Back Lounge. Right. Okay. <laughs> cool. <laughs> and, um, and, and very much involved with um, supporting mental health in the industry. Paul is um, an events production manager and, and director of ethics business. Paul has also set up uh, a, the UK Live Events Forum for freelancers. Did I yeah. get that one right, Paul? Yeah. Boy, I'm on, I'm on a roll today. I really am. <laughs> yeah, welcome both of you. Um, what I'd like to do is, uh, I'd, I'd like to start with you, Susie, and if you could just tell our audience a little bit more about yourself, a little bit more about your background. And while you're doing that, just give us some idea as to why you chose to do the Mental Health First Aid course. Okay, well, thanks for having me here today, first of all. Only too happy to say what I got from this course because it's been a lot. Um, so, as you said, normally I'm a tour manager and all that went away last year with the advent of COVID. Still waiting 
to uh, really own that job title again. Um, but what's been happening is in this past year, I've been doing a lot of voluntary work um, and it's sort of not really come out of nowhere. It's always been a subject really dear to my heart. I went through burnout big time, left the industry, uh, left touring for 10 years and came back to it just a few years ago. So I understand the impact of mental health issues. Um, but in this past year, I've started a community called The Back Lounge, which is for a little bit like music support, anyone related to, well, for this, it's music touring, so lots of crew, We've got some performers, we've got all sorts of people on there and we meet every week and it's just a safe space and it's a peer group and we have various guests and things on and we talk about things that affect us. And I'm not a therapist, I'm a tour manager. I was acutely aware that maybe there was some extra skill set I needed to be able to like maintain that safe space. Um, so that was my first reason why I wanted to do the training. And the second one is uh, with a bunch of other uh, tour managers and production managers, we started a group last summer called Tour Production Group. And it's sort of trying to bring together people that directly work in the industry with a view to making some positive changes. And a really big part of that is mental welfare. And I share a group within that. And what's come about from doing the training is a couple of really key things. First of all, is the mental health charter, which is a one page document for touring. And one of the aims on that is to have every tour with a mental health trained uh, professional on there, having done this course. Um, and then the other big thing that's come out of that is we, uh, there was me and a, a colleague, did the training and felt that having toured uh, in all kinds of different groups for many years, um, that addiction and recovery were a really big issue in our industry. We wanted to know better how to support our colleagues and recognising from the mental health training how there are really important things that you can do. Um, so we came back to yourselves, to music support, and we've now done the fundraiser and raised some money to actually start another workshop which is almost kind of an add-on to the music to the mental health training although you don't have to have done the mental health training but anyway there's more of that I know is going to be announced soon but there are two really big things that have come out of me doing this training with you Norman I just talk really fast I hope that made sense <laughs> no that makes absolute sense and and what I'm hearing is that um, you know, what, what, what sort of came out of it was that you became acutely aware, not just of, uh, about mental health uh, stuff, but also because addiction was touched on a little bit on the course, it, you felt like there need to, needed to be a bit more. Um, and so watch the space, folks. Uh, mental health and recovery aware is on its way. <laughs> Um, just before I go on to Paul, though, I just wanted to ask you a really quick question about what was your experience like on the course? Uh, it was amazing. It was full on, uh, which a lot of that is to do with Zoom, I think, and the whole nature of doing a course on Zoom. But the space is held so well. And actually, I learned a lot about groups from being part of it. Uh, we had on our group someone who definitely was triggered at one point, and it felt very safe and very comfortable to be there with that person and the space was very much held for them. Um, and also actually what's really come out of it for me is kind of the whole thing about empathy and listening skills. And that, again, is something that I've become so much more aware of from the training. You mentioned the listening skills and just that 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 idea of just listening without judgment is is kind of what I'm hearing there. Listening without trying to fix or without trying to resolve the problem. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good stuff. Thank you so much. Uh, and Paul, how about you? Tell us a little bit more about yourself. And yeah, why did you choose to do the Mental Health First Aid course? Well, it's kind of something I fell into by chance, but I mean, uh, last March, I mean, my last event was supposed to be St. Patrick's Day in Trafalgar Square, and we were loading the truck and told that the event was cancelled. Um, and, you know, it kind of gives you a little bit of thinking time, and over that weekend, I kind of, you kind of start to see the ramifications of what was happening with the pandemic, and it was becoming more and more serious. So, myself and the operations manager, like, 
we've got to try and do something to try and bring people together that we know and the crew and the, the freelancers and everybody who works together. And I said, well, why don't we set a little forum up? We'll email everybody out, get everybody together, and there's a place where we can all come together. So we did that on the Friday night, and the Saturday morning there was over 200 people. It's like, wow, that's great. Um, a week later, there was a thousand, and then about six weeks after that, we had almost 8,000 people. So there was clear a need for something to happen. But what was noticeable was there was a lot of anger and a lot of aggression. And there was a lot of people on the forum really expressing their anger and especially at each other and other people. And that's quite hard to deal with. And I certainly started to feel quite, you know, it was getting on top of me. It was becoming a little bit overwhelming. And then this wonderful woman, Joanne Croxford, reached out to us and said, she said, Paul, she said, um, who's looking after the person that look, who's looking after the people? And I thought, well, I've never really thought of it like that. So we had this real great conversation. We chatted away for about two hours. And she said, you need to do a mental health first aid course. It will be not only be good for your forum and for the people there, but for you personally. So I jumped onto the course. And within about 15 minutes of you being on the course, listening to Norman and the other delegates who were there, it was, I was so pleased to be there. And the, one of the first things that you talk about is being non-judgmental towards other people. And as human beings, we, we're automatically programmed to be judgmental about people for, you know, for, for, for no apparent reason. You know, we just we judge people. And that's one of the hardest things to do. I'm guilty of it. And we're all guilty of it, judge, being that judgmental person. So it's really about trying to focus on that and be objective when you're talking to people. And it helped me immensely with the people on the forum. I mean, it's now well over 16,000. And the way I write on there is to be objective, not be offensive or abusive. And when people become in that vein, and very rarely we see that now, what's more that happen is when somebody reaches out, they, they get the help that they want, you know, and it's fantastic. So we've seen a real mm. change. So for me, going on the course, seeing the other delegates, how everybody worked. And it was just, it was, it was, it was fantastic. I learned so much from it and I've been able to carry that over into, into day-to-day into day -day life and especially working on the forum, doing the forum posts and making sure that people know that if they've got issues, there is somebody they can talk to, there's somebody they can reach out to. And it's that constant reminder to people to say, if you really need the support, then, you know, there are people who will support you. Lovely. Thank you so much. One of the things that you really highlighted there, Paul, was about the non-judgmental listening bit. And and I think that's that that was such a, a real crucial point you made, just in terms of the fact that we're all so programmed to judge, aren't we? Yeah. But what the course teaches is is how do you it is more about how to listen without actually uh, any sort of preconceived ideas. So there's some stuff there around really exploring and reflecting on your own sort of frame of reference, if you will, in terms of, uh, you know, w what do I think, what do I make up about mental illness? You know, or what was I taught about mental illness and how does that impact and influence the way I engage with people with mental Ill illnesses? That is so, so crucial. And thank you. Thank you very much for sharing that. Um, the next question I guess I want to throw out to both of you actually um, is around uh, did the course sort of meet your expectations? Uh, either one of you could answer uh, that really. Susie, do you want to go first? Ah, uh, yeah, God, that's a good question. Uh, I would say it has because actually it's opened a massive doorway for me. I've just started my first baby step towards psychotherapy training. And that's oh, lovely. Come out of this course because it's amazing. It's um, the text you get with it as well is fantastic. It was a real thinker. It, you know, it doesn't begin and end with doing that course. It really doesn't. Um, and I think uh, the greater awareness, the more people that do this course, um, the better it's going to be for our industry for sure. Mm. your question. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, no, no, absolutely. How about you, Paul? Did you want to uh, chime in there? Absolutely exceeded my expectations. Uh, I was, um, I approached it, say, with trepidation, didn't know what to expect. I received all of the paperwork and the manuals, and it's quite in depth. Um, and so you don't know what to expect, but you get together with this close knit group of people. And as Susie mentioned, uh, you know, there are triggers there, and people do open up. It's a very safe space. 
And one of the things I realised, you know, the fantastic work that Susie's doing, for example, is there's a, there's a definite need. So, you know, I, I spoke with both yourself and Eric, and one of the things that we're trying to do from the forum is we're trying to, we're trying to get people to, to come forward who want to do mental health first aid training. We've put a cohort through. We've almost got another cohort ready. And we, you know, it's, you know, most of it's been funded by myself, and I'm really proud of that because it was something I felt that was so needed. And I think at the time we, when we spoke, we talked about having a database uh, of uh, people across the sector, so that you know where where you're based or where your particular skill set lies. So if you want to talk to someone who relates to that, so if you're a video tech and you live in London. Mm. You want to find somebody that understands your position mm. rather than talking to somebody else that may not understand what you do. They don't yeah. understand what happens on at all. Yeah. So, and having that database was just, you know, an amazing idea. So for me, it's like, if I can help and we can push that message out and maybe possibly raise a little bit of funding, which we seem to be doing okay, then it's fantastic because it goes back to what, again, what Susie said about having somebody in every sort of tour and every large event, having somebody there that is mental health first aid trained. So if somebody is not feeling on their best, then they know there's somebody there they can talk to. And that can make a massive difference to people knowing that they can actually talk to somebody. Yeah. Lovely. And, and you know, you, you've brought up a really key point here. You know, physical first aid is, is absolutely essential in most organisations, certainly from organisations that that um, employ 50 or more people. Physical uh, first aid is mandatory. And one of the things that Mental Health First Aid England is, is keen on doing is making um, sure that that becomes mandatory for employers and organizations as well. Because very much like physical first aid, mental, mental health should be treated no differently from physical health. And basically what I'm hearing you saying is what you're setting up is something very similar to what people are setting up in physical first aid with physical first aid, which I think is absolutely brilliant. Um, certainly something that we um, are hoping to move towards. Um, having a mental health first aider in your in your organization is 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 an absolute game changer. Just in terms of knowing that people knowing that there's someone they could go to should they need that support. Yeah, lovely. Good stuff. Um, just one other question I want to um, ask you. There's a couple of questions that have come through on the Q&A Q that I'd like to respond to. But I'd like to ask you just one other question uh, before we close. And did the course, many, so sometimes people come on these courses not really knowing what to expect. You said it met, met your expectations. But also, you know, with with certain sort of made up opinions or certain certainly certain um, made up made up ideas of what they think the the thing they're coming on the course to learn is. Um, did the course change any of your attitudes or approach towards how you might help others, based on being there? Uh, shall I go first? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It Definitely, it, and it goes back to, and I said to you, you know, previous Norman, I call it my Norman mantra. It, it's that non judgmental. It is, it's just, it's so simple because it's easy to judge people and jump, you know, jump to conclusions. You have no clue what's going on in the background with somebody else. Mm. And it's easy to lash out and, and, and not understand their situation. So and that to me, just something that's really key is just ensuring that when you're addressing somebody, when you're talking to somebody, it's that non-judgmental attitude. And I, I, I can't say that enough to people because it's so easy to lash out without thinking, you know, and it is that thinking that you need to do. Yeah. How about you, Susie? I would definitely second everything Paul just said, um, back to the non-judgmental, the listening. Um, again, the holding the space which I've really felt within the back lounge, our peer group. I'm less scared of the silences now. <laughs> Sometimes a big silence will be something really amazing that someone's going to say. And you don't have to fill up every single space. Those little pauses in between are really important. Really, really true for both of you. There's, there's this thing, isn't there, about um, sometimes we're listening to someone 
and we're listening with with our own thoughts. We're, we're thinking about what we're going to say. Um, and so we, we don't hear. <laughs> we don't hear at all. And so yeah, and so what you're saying is being on the course actually helped you to really take a step back and really listen and not formulate responses to what you're going to say, because oftentimes what we're trying to do or what we want to do is fix, isn't it? Someone comes to us with a problem and we want to fix it. And that's the reality. That's how we are. We, we, we were programmed like that sometimes. And um, uh, yeah, it's great to know that 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 you've taken that away because that is so, so important when supporting someone with a mental ill health um, that we really listen and hear what they're saying. Um, I've got a couple of questions. I'm going to take a couple of questions because um, they're there. And then if, if there's time, I'll, I'd like to come back to you guys. Is that all right? Yeah. So someone of our, has asked, uh, what do you think will be the long term mental effects on society from the pandemic? Wow, that's a big one. <laughs> um, so there's there's there are studies being done as we speak. Um, I know that for sure. I don't have uh, specific figures here or specific data, but one thing I can, can say is anecdotally, I know that the rates of anxiety has in increased drastically. That goes without saying, really. You think about um, the uncertainty that the pandemic has brought about, the uncertainty of whether people are going to be working, the, the uncertainty of uh, of of whether you know we'll they'll have a, a job the uncertainty of of um you know having yeah having to reinvent themselves almost you know there's lots of uncertainties that have come about as a result of the pandemic and so with that comes quite a lot of anxiety um comes uh depression the, the the rates of depression we know has increased so in terms of a long term effect i imagine we're going to see more anxiety more depression more people um wanting to end their lives it's that's the reality and um what we need more than anything else more support and more resources um there just not, isn't enough i believe the government has put aside a certain amount of funding uh, for psychological interventions. Let's hope that's real and let's hope that it's enough. I hope I've asked, answered the question. Um, another question, how has MHFA training been useful in real life? Both of your own thoughts, process, and then helping others in background, background support. That's for you, Susie. I can't see the question. So the question is, how has MHFA training been useful in real life? both for your own thought process and in helping others in your backline support group? OK, um, well, definitely the listening, the holding space. Um, also, I think it kind of gives you a bit of a toolkit. It gives you a bit more confidence in um, because sometimes we do touch on some of the trickier subjects. Um, you never quite know what's going to come up from week to week. Um, and I felt I'm confident in being able to handle some of the things that have come up. I mean, it's education, isn't it? It's, it's learning about what's available, what you might be able to cope with yourself and where you might need to go and seek help for someone. That's really important. And actually something Paul said before, um, myself in this too. Lovely. So there's there's a, a quite a bit in there is in the training, isn't there, about um, guiding an individual to the appropriate professional help. Um, so there's there's that, and of course, as you said, um, you know, learning about supporting yourself as well. We have just about enough time for one um, final question, and and it's actually quite a good one. One I'm happy to to respond to. It's from an anonymous um, questioner. Is that a, is that a word? Questioner. <laughs> Uh, what support is on offer for mental health first aiders as they embark on supporting and signposting others? And do mental health first aiders have progress meetings? So um, I'm happy to say that one of the things that we are currently um, looking at at Music Support is the formation of um, a community of mental health first aiders who 
will get together and um, meet meet on a regular basis to discuss best practice, discuss um, any sort of challenges they are having. Um, indeed, discuss um, you know uh, sort of celebrations that they they've experienced as well, and also to update people with new information in terms of statistics and new approaches. So watch this space, folks. That's not happened yet, but we are working behind the scenes to make that happen. So again, watch this space. I hope I've answered that question. Well, um, listen, thank you both, Susie and Paul, for being here. You, I, I remember you both. You, you both um, attended very different um, uh, with, with different cohorts, but I remember you both as um, being terrific delegates. And thanks for spreading the word, and thank you for um, continuing your work um, in the mental health uh, arena. Thank you. Now back to you, Lynn. Hi, thanks, thanks, Norman and Susie and Paul. That was that was just so interesting. I think it's always we can kind of provide the overview, but I just think it's always so great to actually welcome people along that have you know that have taken the training and you know how they've applied it to their lives and just to say I was lucky enough to take the training myself recently and it was just fantastic um online with the group there's about 12 of us just from different parts of the industry and you know it's just very strange that over even over zoom or over a video conference you can really form quite a quite a tight bond with people so I, I just find it incredible so I just want to say thanks Norman as well um and thanks for everybody who submitted some questions there as well that was that was brilliant um, and just to remind you that we'll be sharing the, that short presentation that Norman shared with you after the session. Um, I've been posting, as you might have seen on the Q&A box there, um, some, some details on Susie and Paul um, and the link to where you can find out about um, mental health first aid training on our website along with Norman's details. Um, and again, I should say on there as well, we've got availability for the rest of the year pretty much. Um, and also some fantastic testimonials. Um, you know, you saw a few there on screen, but we've, got, we've really got a, lo a lot of them and some personal stories as well. So I'd advise you to go on there and have a look through and um, you should find lots of really useful information. So moving on to second half. Um, and as I mentioned at the beginning, um, we're really proud, um, thanks to funding from industry partners, that um, Music Support is able to provide um, one year's free subscription for a limited for a limited period, folks. So get in there um, to NHS approved wellbeing app um, Thrive. Um, and I'm really excited today to welcome uh, the wonderful Sean Mackey from Thrive, who's who's going to share some of his wisdom on the app. So hi, Sean. Hi, Lynn. Thanks so much for having Happy me. Happy Monday. Happy Monday, yeah. Welcome. yeah. Good, good to see you, yeah. Uh, thanks so much for joining us today. And just before I hand over to Sean, who's, who's going to give us a demo of the app, um, I should say that um, if you would like to, if you'd like to sign up for this, um, the details whenever you register for this event, there would have been a link in there to bring you through to Music Support's um, website or Thrive page. But it's, again, I'll type it into the Q&A, but it's um, www.musicsupport.org forward slash thrive hyphen app. Um, and if you go on here, there's um, some great highlights of the app. Again, you can read testimonials of, of industry peers who have used it. Um, and also we've got an FAQ in there, which everybody loves an FAQ. Um, and also you'll find a link to take you through to register for your free account. Um, so all you need to do is tick a box to tell us what part of the industry you're from, um, set up your email address and a password, and then you can start using the app. Um, so Sean is going to share a demo with us now. Um, and if you have any questions, Feel free to, to put them on screen there and I can feel them through and we can answer them at the end um, of the demo. But without further ado, enough from me. Sean, it's over to you. Thank you so much. Uh, before I begin my demo, I should probably give a bit of background as to who, who Thrive are and who I am. So as Lynn said, my name is Sean Mackey and I am one of the relationship managers at, at Thrive. Um, Thrive was, was founded as a company back in, in 2012 by a clinical psychologist and a clinical uh, psychiatrist. And they spent the next four years uh, researching and developing uh, an app with one of the uh, creators of The Sims and Tomb, Tomb Raider. They spent four years um, testing, researching with, with, with several different universities as well. Uh, and then in 2016, the Thrive app w was launched, uh, which you're, you're about to see very, very soon. We currently support uh, over 3.8 million uh, users worldwide and yeah it's a fantastic app and I'm going to stop talking and, and I'm going to start demoing the app for you now and this is the Thrive app 
this is essentially the home page, also known as the sessions tab highlighted in the top left hand corner in blue there. And this is a screen you'll see when you first download and sign up to Thrive. When you're signing up to Thrive, uh, choose an email address of your choice, a password of your choice. When you first do log in, you'll notice a lot of the boxes in the sessions tab are grayed out. The reason we do this is to give a bit more of a structure. So we want you to start with the CVT program, which I'll get into um, very shortly. However, if you do fancy a bit of meditation or calm breathing, you're feeling a bit eager, just click on it and it will unlock it. We're not, we're, we're not going to stop you. So I'm going to start with the CBT program, which is the first tab on the sessions page. Uh, CBT, also known as cognitive behavioral therapy, is the connection between our thoughts, emotions and our behaviors. And it's very much at the heart of our app. It's a technique a GP may refer you to, and it's widely known as a prevention tool. There are 24 sessions uh, between two and seven minutes in length. Some are interactive and some are podcast-esque, so you can sit back, relax, and just listen. And the wonderful thing about our CBT program within the Thrive app is you can go back and access sessions again and again and again. If you've done all 24 and you want you want to you want to you know, relive them, or if you've got you've already listened to the thoughts and behavior connection, it didn't really make sense. You can go back and access it whenever you want. And the idea with with CBT is if we learn these techniques when we're well, we're able to understand the processes behind CBT a lot better. And it's not only helpful for our own well-being; it can also help others around us and have really beneficial and powerful conversations about mental health. So back to the sessions tab and on to the second tab, which is calm breathing. It does exactly what it says on the tin. It's breathing deep from the belly. Calm breathing helps reduce stress, anxiety, and panic. And you can tailor it with ambience and guidance as you can see here. If you're still relatively new to calm breathing, I'd highly recommend keeping spoken guidance on full and breathing effects on full. Once you start to, to really get it and you know you're, you start to become more comfortable with it you can change these to partial as well and the wonderful thing, thing with our calm breathing as well you can tailor it to your day i really enjoy using calm breathing before a particularly stressful meeting or to begin my day it just sets me up it's brilliant and the wonderful thing about calm breathing and lots of other techniques within the Thrive app is we want to teach you these techniques so you don't have to rely on the app in future. Let's say your phone dies on the bus and you're feeling a bit anxious. You'll know the techniques when you're sat there and you can do them and all that anxiety and stress will alleviate. So back to the sessions tab and onto deep muscle relaxation. This particular technique is very popular with men. It's one of my personal favorites as well. And the idea of deep, deep muscle relaxation is tensing each muscle group one by one. It's instant benefit. It's ideal to reduce anxiety, improve sleep, or just to kind of switch off at the end of the day. I really enjoy keeping music off when doing music, uh, deep muscle relaxation, but I turn the ambience to garden. I kind of live out in the countryside ever so slightly, so it, it just totally relaxes me. Super, super powerful. It takes about four to five minutes. and I'm going to say it, it's ideal if you're lying down when doing this. So just before you go to bed, perfect time for some deep muscle relaxation. So back to the sessions tab and on to meditation. So this is probably a technique that some of you have heard of. And the idea of meditation is to train your attention. As you can see here, we've got lots of different iterations of, of, of meditation with customizable durations. So you're very, very much in, your, in control of your meditation journey. So let's say you tried some mindful body scan, it didn't really work for you, uh, but you can try some, some unguided meditation for, for uh, you can try some unguided meditation instead to see if that works for you. And the overarching concept of meditation is to bring you back to that present moment. It's a super, super powerful technique. So back to self-suggestion. This is a technique I wasn't too familiar with when I first joined Thrive. And it, it used to be um, known as self-hypnosis we change the name to self-suggestion and the idea of self-suggestion is to associate a word or an image with a sense of relaxation so for example my kind of associated image would be 
sitting in my grandparents' garden a few summers ago. It was gorgeous weather and I was just totally at ease. All my problems just melted away. And the idea is you want to associate these happy, relaxing memories with a sense of relaxation. Similarly to, to deep muscle relaxation and uh, calm breathing, you can change the music and the ambience to tailor it to however you wish. Super, super powerful technique as well. And then the final technique I'm going to talk to you about on the sessions page is applied relaxation. This helps to treat some more severe forms of anxiety. It's a combination of CBT and deep muscle relaxation. Again, a GP can refer you uh, onto some sessions for applied relaxation, but there is a very long wait on the NHS for this currently. It's an intensive course and you can achieve mastery in about six to eight weeks. It takes a lot of practice, but it's definitely worth sticking by. As you can see, I'm still kind of learning a lot about applied relaxation. I'm very early on in my journey, but I'm sticking with it. I'm gonna smash it. So I'm gonna take you to the assessment tab at the bottom of the sessions page. I'm gonna quickly go through the daily checkup here. The daily checkup is essentially just to check in with yourself, see how you're feeling. And let's say, for example, you've had a pretty stressful day at work and the anxiety levels are quite high. So you're not feeling too, too brilliant. So you, you can adjust the slider to how you're feeling. And as I mentioned, feeling particularly anxious. And those feelings of anxiety are particularly high today, for example. So once you've filled out the, the daily checkup, it will bring you to, through to this questionnaire. And this will, this will bring you through to the anxiety and depression scale, the PHQ-9 and the GAD-7 survey. It's internationally recognized and it's used by GPs and EAPs all over the world. So for the purpose of this demo, I'm just gonna go through and click everything as, as, as green. So this daily checkup will pop up as soon as you, as, you, as soon as you start Thrive. It's just a really, really great way just to see how you're feeling. So once you've finished your, your daily checkup and you've been through the anxiety and depression scale, it will bring up your goals page. So goals within Thrive become much more personalized the more you use it. As you can see at the bottom there, you can set a reminder if you are a little bit forgetful, but you can also change the goals if they're not relevant. So I've been getting into cycling recently. So instead of going for a walk, I'm going to change it for a, to a 30 minute bike ride instead. And let's say I want to change the intense muscle relaxation to a mindful walk instead. You can tailor it to however you wish. So I'll continue on there. So in the top left hand corner, you'll see something known as, as Thrive Points. Within the Thrive app, you earn points for everything that you do. So if I go back into the goals page, which is on the top right hand corner, and let's say I completed my bike ride today, I'll earn some Thrive Points. We are currently developing a way to spend your uh, Thrive Points in the app. There is only one way to spend your Thrive Points currently, and I'll get onto that very, very shortly. So along the bottom of the page, you'll see a button called Progress. I'm just gonna click on that one now. This is where everything is tracked and saved within the Thrive app. This is your personal record and it's owned by you. It's great because you can kind of track back and see how you were feeling a few weeks ago, what were the triggers and what helped you get past those negative moods. You can ask Thrive to uh, send, you, send you this as a PDF and you can show it to your, your counsellor or your GP as well. So along the bottom, the third button is the music support button, also known as, uh, also known as the support box. When I went through the daily checkup earlier, if I screen positive for anxiety or depression, it would flag up these options. They are, however, they are, however, here to access whenever you need them. There are external support options. So along the bottom, I'm gonna click on the activities tab. So here you'll find wise words and messages. Wise words is a distraction therapy game. It's so much better than Candy Crush, trust me. I've spent hours playing wise words. 
the idea of wise words, it's a positive word search. And as I mentioned before, it's the only way to spend your Thrive Points currently. You can spend it on getting clues because it can get a bit tricky. And underneath wise words, you've got messages. This is one of the few ways that the Thrive app sends notifications. And it's a way to anonymously interact with other users. So I'm just gonna quickly run through it with you guys. So all of these, you've got these different design postcards, these are all kind of preloaded. Let's go with the purple one, that's, that's really, really nice. And you've got all these pre-written messages here. So let's click on that one. And when you first click in into, into the messages activity page, you'll get to choose a random, well, I say, you'll get to choose a, a username. I went for warm-hearted legend, legendary mammoth. Pretty random, I love it. You click send, and that will get sent to any one of the 3.8 million Thrive users around the world. And bonus, you win some Thrive points as well, which is great. And the final thing I'm gonna go through with you is on the far left at the bottom of your screen, you'll see live coaching. This is a text-based platform built directly into the Thrive app. There are human graduate psychologists in London who run this at the other end, and this is unlimited. There aren't six sessions and you're done. You can speak to one of our graduate psycho psychologists as many times as you wish. It's only open uh, currently from Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And the average response time usually is about 10 minutes, but at the moment we're seeing replies within about 30 seconds. And the idea of live coaching is you can open up a chat and you can talk through your own issues, or you can talk about your loved ones, your friends, your colleagues who are also you know, suffering because it's the way of the world at the moment, unfortunately. But it's great having a therapist essentially at your fingertips, super, super powerful. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is more Thrive Points for one. That is the end of my demo. And we shall now move on to the Q&A. So any questions? Oh, fantastic. Thanks so much, Sean. That was that was brilliant. Uh, a pleasure. Yeah, really interesting. Yeah, I mean, I, I've obviously got the app Thrive up myself <laughs> and uh, the, there's just there's just so much. And as I think you said, you can really tailor it to um, to kind of work for you. And, and you know, I really like that one of our kind of log and the first thing it asked me is how I'm feeling today. And um, exactly. and, you know, we'll respond to that accordingly. And um, yeah, there, I mean, there's 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 so much to it. I mean, I th I'm sure that everybody has their own kind of favorite features. Um, I I really like the calm breathing myself, and I, I really like the fact that you can do anywhere between two and seven minutes, and it just take a few minutes at the beginning or at the end of your day to relax. So that's mm -hmm. that's fantastic. Also, the deep muscle relaxation is brilliant as well. Um, and just again to kind of help you unwind at the end of the day and sort of kind of tense all your muscles and relax them all. And um, and I, I really like the fact that you can choose between having having music um, or you can just have the the ambience. I know you talked about kind of that, that feeling of your of your grandparents' garden or just yeah. kind of being in the forest. So it's just. It's really relaxing. It's great. I, I'm I'm still working my way through the CBT, but it's it's brilliant for me because again, you can just dip in and do a few minutes here or there, and I'm like, even with the animations and everything, it's brilliant. So, yeah, um, I'm a big fan of Thrive, and I'm not just saying that. Um, so oh, we thank yeah. you. <laughs> um, so we had a question that came through there. Um, if anybody has any questions, please feel free to post them. Um, so from Meg, hi again, Meg. Um, so Mick's saying, what if your GAD and PHQ um, scores are high? Um, does the app signpost to more professional care or a crisis line? That's a really fantastic question, Mick. Thank you so much for that. So yeah, uh, you're you're spot on actually. So when you do sign, uh, when you do score quite highly on the PHQ nine or and the GAD seven, it will uh, the, the signposting options in in the middle of the app at, at the bottom uh, with the music support logo. Those options will be um, uh, kind of signposted to you as well as the opportunity to talk to one of our uh, in app therapists as 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 well. So there's a whole range of of support options there um, that kind of cover all all bases. Brilliant, yeah, and and they're they're kind of very much tailored for for the. Um, music and live events um, industries as well. So you'll, you'll find exactly. a, you'll find a range from music support. And again, you know, we've talked about, we have our, we have our confidential helpline, which is nine to five Monday to Friday, and you can always contact us, but there are lots of other help musicians and lots of other um, resources as well. So you can go to that directly through, through the homepage. Yeah, um, it's, and it's, Sean, it's great, yeah. 
Yeah, I was just going to say, just remind me again, because I always get confused in this. Um, PHQ9 and GAD7, uh-huh. remind us again what they stand for. I have uh, an acronym. <laughs> you have an acronym and a stat, don't you, uh, Lynn? Yeah, so I do. PHQ9 is a personal health questionnaire, and GAD is general anxiety disorder question i believe I've, I've, my okay. mind's just kind of got a bit blank there, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah so th- they are used by uh, gps and eaps all across uh, the world so they are kind of uniform ev- everywhere okay okay and on that subject then i know i think you, you, you talked about this already but people are very wary these days of, of the data that they're mm-hmm. providing and where that's used so so you know if i set up my thrive account and i'm kind of putting in how i'm feeling or you know whatever on a daily basis where is that information used? It's it's used for anonymous reports, so we can see the 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 common stresses. But within those reports, we don't see names or email addresses or anything like that. It's just it's just the amount of people who are using it and the the kind of common stresses. So we're able to uh, see every month uh, what what keeps flagging up for for most people within within the music industry. And for the last few months, we've seen uh, work health and uh, relationships kind of keep consistently uh, flagging up within within our uh, reports okay interesting well i know it's been a, re- a really difficult time for people within the yeah. events yeah. music industry so that's not that's no real surprise and then do you um whenever you get these common stressors i mean d- do they ever inform how you update the app at all because i think you have mentioned before that that the app is being updated quite regularly yeah, so they can uh, help with our with our updates. We at the moment we're currently updating our app at least once a month, whether it's general bug fixes or our kind of more larger kind of roadmap um, type type thing. Um, but we actually, so for, for for some of our other clients who also use uh, Thrive in in other industries, it, it helps us to um inform our engagement strategy with them so we can also put together webinars and 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 things like that and i know lynn we we have kind of worked together with you on on various different uh webinars in the past and uh, i'm sure we'll be doing some more in the future so that that um that those common stresses and that data do help to inform us on on that as well okay brilliant yeah that's a good point actually what i should say for anyone out there who is Who's thinking about downloading the app or if you if you work for a company or um you know within with the music industry and this is something that you've downloaded and you're like actually this looks great i'd love to roll this out to the rest of my team or our colleagues um get in contact with us you can contact us directly at thrive at music support.org um and if you want us to you know sean and i or just myself can pop in if you've got like a virtual meeting with your team and do a quick three minute overview to the app it's really really easy for us to do or if it's something a little bit bigger that you want like um sean was just saying we can do something like this we can actually come on and, and deliver a demo that's bespoke to to your company and you know we're really we're really all about getting getting the app into the hands of the people in the industry who, who need it so we're, we're really really keen to do that so please feel free to reach out to me and we can make that happen for you yeah, um another couple of questions here thrive is great from anon thank you anon oh thank um, you it is great <laughs> how, would, <laughs> how would you suggest that someone you're worried about or think might benefit from using it should download it without being too interfering um what I would do actually, instead of them downloading it, try and practice the the, the techniques that you've, you've you started to learn yourself on them. So if they're if they're feeling particularly anxious, it works really well with kids actually. So if you if you're if your kind of your young one is is going through a bit of an anxious time or a bit of a say a temper tantrum for example, if you're if you're able to remember your own calm breathing exercises, do it with your kids, do it with your loved ones or anyone else. So it's just basically. The idea with behind Thrive, as, as I mentioned in the demo, we want you to learn these uh, these techniques when you're well, so then you're able to use them for, for your loved ones uh, and your, your colleagues, your friends, etc. And it just it just makes that that whole conversation around mental health so much so much easier, and everyone's a lot more comfortable just you know coming to you for help and uh, and admitting that. And that those techniques do really help put a stop to those mental health conditions getting potentially worse yeah so. absolutely yeah okay that's great that's a great great answer thanks sean oh here's a question for you okay ready you be put in the spot with this one so sean how does thrive differ from some of the other mental health apps out there what makes can, it stand I can out? Answer this in one one way we are nhs approved as lynn has said okay. uh, uh, several times we are one of the very few uh, mental well-being apps that is NHS approved. We are a social impact company. We do not um, any any money we make goes back into the app, as I mentioned in 
in the demo. So we are constantly evolving, and um, we're not we're not we're not in this because it's because mental health is being talked about at the moment, or it's a fad, or it's cool. We we are here because we genuinely genuinely believe that we can we can make a difference with with our app, and we are we are seeing that with our millions of users around around the world, and we want to continue um, that uh, in, for for many years to come. Yeah, brilliant. Thanks, Sean. And yeah, I think I, I mean I know you highlighted this in the in the demo, but I I think the live coaching it's just it's fantastic and the fact that it's whether i'm feeling a little bit distressed or i'm worried about somebody else in my life and been able to connect to somebody and actually have that conversation and i think it's it's great at the moment because it's everybody's at home and it's really difficult to pick up the phone and speak to somebody so to be able to actually have that to be able to link to somebody by a text and you know sort of form that relationship is brilliant and i know i i love a stat but um i believe that i think you told me that in the past year um, usage of the live coaching facility has gone up by 329 percent which That's just it. shows you which just shows you how invaluable it is to people and how much it's 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 really it's really needed so um so yeah again please feel free to check that out in the app as well and um and it's it's a real game changer um so let me see We've got one more question here oh it's from meg again hi meg um looks like a great tool yes it is um how much is the app well that's that's probably a really good one to end on because I'm really <laughs> pleased to tell you, Meg, um, that thanks to funding, as I said earlier, we um, at Music Support are delighted um, to be able to offer Thrive to our colleagues within the music and live events industry for free. So we're giving you one year's free, free subscription to go in there and use all the incredible features that we've talked about already. Um, so please, please go in find the app, um, download it, share it with your friends and colleagues and um, get in contact with us at thrive at musicsupport.org if you've got any questions or if you've used the app and you've got any feedback, we'd love to hear from you as well. Um, so I think that covers everything, Sean, unless you have anything else you want to you wanna add? Uh, no, I mean, yeah, down, as, as Lynn said, download it, have a, have a play around, find find what, what, what works for you because not every, I mean, there's a hundred uh, over a hundred hours of content in there and not everything's, you not everything's going to work for you, for, but find something within the app that that, that really works for you and, and and stick with it, and you will I, you will see a difference if you if you okay. if you continually keep using the Thrive app. So, yeah, thank you uh, for, to everyone for, for for listening to to me ramble on for about half now. <laughs> no, that was brilliant. Thanks, thanks so much again, Sean. So. Yeah, all remains for me to say is thank you so much for joining us today at Music Supports Mental Health Hour. Um, and a thanks again to Norman, to Susie and Paul for talking about mental health first aid training and to Sean for sharing details on Thrive. Um, remember, you can find out more about us at uh, www.musicsupport.org. Um, and we'll leave you for now and wish you a really, really great um, rest of the week. And, you know, be kind to yourselves and look after, look after yourselves. And um, remember, we're always here if you need us. So thanks very much. Bye. Thank you.